Okay, so here's what it says. I'm starting verse 36. Now, just prior to this story, uh, Jesus has been accused of being a drunkard and womanizer and all this stuff because he hung out with these kind of people. And the Pharisees are saying, birds of a feather flock together. And, um, you know, he's no person by the company they keep. So Jesus is getting a real bad reputation. But this one Pharisee invites him over to the house, probably uh, to trip him up. They're always trying to, you know, booby trap him and stuff. Uh, So it probably wasn't just for wonderful conversational intentions. And he's got other Pharisee friends there. So this is kind of a trap, I suspect. But it says this in verse 36. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus, by the way, the title of this message is outrageous, what is it? Outrageous love, outrageous forgiveness, or the other way around. But you get the point. So when, start over. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, if I never get invited back. He went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. So the way they ate back in those days, they didn't have chairs and around a table. They laid on the floor, and uh, the, the meal would be kind of in the center, and they would lean on one elbow, and they'd eat with the other hand. So they were reclining at the table. And that stupid thing just turned the page on me. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life, and most scholars agree that that is a polite euphemism for a prostitute, uh, or at least for a very loose woman, but usually the loose women were getting money for it. So uh, this this prostitute learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. And that's one more reason to think that she was a prostitute because that was uh, a tool of the trade uh, to smell good. Uh, As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Her tears are falling on his feet. And then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. Get a picture of this. This prostitute comes in, a bunch of... High and mighty holy men are there. And she starts crying. So clearly, it's something that happened between her and Jesus in the past. And then she's kissing his feet and pouring perfume on them. And when the Pharisee, Simon, who had invited him, saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Actually, in, in the code of ethics in first century Jewish culture, uh, you weren't supposed to make eye contact with a woman who wasn't your, uh, um, your, your wife, and certainly weren't supposed to ever t- ha- touch each other. They're really uptight about this kind of stuff. So this is like a major thing here. Jesus answered him, and he answered him even though Simon wasn't saying it to him, but he, he discerned what was going on. He said, Simon, I got something to tell you. <laughs> tell me, teacher, Mr. Prophet. Two people owned money to a cer- owed money to a certain moneylender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now, which of them will, will love him more? What do you think? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt. Forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. And then he turned to the woman and said, Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house, and you didn't give me any water for my feet, which was customary to wash your feet off. Very dusty, very dirty. Your feet get all dirty, so you want to wash them off. You didn't give me any water, but she's wet uh, my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't give me a kiss, a customary kiss, but uh, this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You didn't put oil on my head. It's kind of a refreshing thing to freshen up a little bit, but she's been pouring this expensive perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven as as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. The more you've been forgiven, the more you're going to love. And these, then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. And the other guests, these other Pharisees, began to say to themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? And Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. 